Welcome into the latest edition of the Pump Bank, everybody. Following week five Sunday in the NFL, Jared Bailey, Matt Verder, I'm Sports Illustrated with me to recap all the big games from Sunday. Hey, buddy, it's good to see you. What's going on? How are you? Uh, I'm doing better than than the Steelers defense off at yeah. just everything, just everything. Uh, and everybody who watched that game too, stay up till 1 a.m. To, to watch it. You and I did. That game sucked. It wasn't good. That game. Like I, I especially enjoyed McCarthy celebrating at the end of the game, like, like they deserve to win. <laughs> so, hey, Mike, you guys stink. Yeah. Like, yeah, look, I get it. You're without a bunch of guys, and that's fine. It's on the road. Like, okay, I, listen, oh, wins a win. I get it. It's the NFL fine. Yeah. No serious teams walking off the field after that game. Like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> Three turnovers, 11 penalties. I mean, with due respect to your Steelers, that game should have been over in the middle of the third quarter, but Prescott just couldn't stop turning it over. And you're like, the, the Cowboys are going to lose this game. I mean, Fields couldn't do anything. He had four co- completions for 35 oh. yards in the first half. Pickens looks like he, he just wants to get released. Like, I don't know what his deal is. Um, the most, the, the, the biggest thing he did the entire game was after the game when he just like yeah. threw some Cowboys player down by the face yeah, mask. I think he grabbed Jordan Lewis by his face mask. And yes. just, yeah. yeah, I think it was Jordan Lewis. Yeah, I mean, it's like, the Steelers have no receivers, and Pickens was like third in the snap count for them. It's- There's something going on there, one billion percent something going on. They asked Tomlin about that after the game, and he uh, attributed it to snap management. Uh, they wanted to keep him fresh for you know uh, big That's moments. Right. It's yeah. complete BS. And just for up, so Pickens had 34 offensive snaps. Van Jefferson had 47, That's and true. Calvin Austin had 44. Bro, I didn't even know Van Jefferson so, played. That, I watched the whole game. I didn't even know Van Jefferson was on the field. He uh, So Fields threw, I want to say it was later in the game. I, I think it was on the drive that they scored to take the lead. He threw a really good like back shoulder ball, one-on-one down the field, and Jefferson just dropped it. Did three Unfortunately, catches, he, yards. Awesome. Huge dad. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll start with the Steelers side of things, and then I'll get kind of your take on it. As a Steelers fan, like this is – this is one that I'm not like completely an utter shock. Lost the same way I felt last week. Like these, you know, Indy. I don't think that the Steelers are so much better than Indy. Um, I don't think that they are so much better than Dallas. But without Demarcus Lawrence, without Micah Parsons, um, Marshawn Nealon goes down during this game as well. Like I expected them to be able to do something against that defense. They came in. Dallas came into the game. 32nd in the league in rush EPA. And the Steelers still can't get anything going on the ground with Najee Harris, who every Najee Harris carry to me is the most chaotic three-yard gain I've ever seen in my life. That's basically – he's good for that. That's is basically, Najee Harris good? No. Absolutely yeah, I don't think not. he's either. No. Like, every time I watch Pittsburgh, I always think Jalen Warren's clearly better than Najee He Harris. very much is clearly better. Unfortunately, they've been without him the past couple yeah. weeks. He's doing right, no, I know ankle. he's hurt. But like, yeah. I, I, every time I watch Najee Harris, I'm like, man, he – he just doesn't do anything. Nothing he's, at all. He's he's more recent Clyde Edwards Alaire, where you watch That's the game comment. and you're like, man, I know the name. <laughs> he doesn't do anything. Why Even, is he here? Like, I feel like that's basically what we're looking at. This oh, and the Steelers recognize that. That's why they didn't pick up his fifth year right, option. Right. So, yeah, but I mean, look, the Steelers, they're three and two. Yeah. They, you know, they've had some good wins. The Falcons, Chargers, they've had you know, two losses. All right. The Falcons or the, the Colts game. That's not great. The the, the Dallas game, fine. Here's the big key for them. Let's be real. They got to beat the Raiders. The Raiders are awful. They're bad. You have to win that game. The Jets game might be a race to three. I I, I mean, the Jets, the Jets are not good, man. Like I have watched every stitch of the Jets this year. They're not good. Then you get the Giants at home. Like we're kind of going to win those three games because after the bye, got Washington right away after the bye. That schedule's brutal. Like at Washington, Baltimore, Cleveland with granted now looks a little bit easier, but still, like, you yeah. know, it's going to be a low scoring game. At Cincinnati, Cleveland again, at Philly, at Baltimore, Kansas City, Cincinnati. Yeah. Like all man. of their divisional games take place after the bye. Right. Doing the, right. So I mean, you're, like, you're talking the last nine games of the season. You don't want to have to win more than like four of them. Right. You know, yeah, if, you, if you can win these three games, go into your bye at six and two, then you feel great. I don't think they're gonna do that. I think best case, they probably go five and three. They'll they'll let one of these things slip away. 
Um, well, if they go two and one, they get the five and three. They have to buy. If you, like the key for them to have to buy is going to be they've got to beat Cleveland twice. Yeah, they have to win those games, and then maybe look, maybe you, you you get a game against either Washington or or Cincinnati, and you know find another one in there. But I think I think at worst they'll split with Baltimore because usually they play the Ravens really well. They won they seven of the last they eight do. against Baltimore, so I think that they'll get at least a split there. Cincinnati, I don't think they're beating the Bengals. Um, Kansas City, they're not beating the Chiefs on Christmas. Maybe Philadelphia. I mean, they're talented, but they're dysfunctional as hell. So I mean, that's one that they can maybe steal late in the year. But regardless, um, yeah, last night was weird. Defensively, like, it was a tale of two halves. The offense stunk for the first half. They weren't great in the second half, but they picked it back up. They scored on the first drive that they had the ball. Um, Fields let them down the field on their last drive before, you know, the whole, you know, two plays, throw it backwards, try to have a Cal Stanford type situation. They took the lead with four minutes left. The defense had, you mentioned it, three takeaways. They blocked a field goal. But even then, man, like, in the second half, they gave up two drives of 15 plays or longer that both resulted in touchdowns where Rico Dowdle was giving them absolute hell. They yes. could not limit him to less Sorry. than a five-yard gain. Hunter Lukey had a big catch on a screen pass that set him up inside the red zone. And they still almost pulled it off because Landon Roberts made one of the craziest plays I've ever seen, like diving yeah. over everybody, forcing a fumble. Dak gets back on it, and they, they throw the touchdown to Jalen Tolbert. It, I think that this is just kind of who the Steelers always have been, who they're going to continue to be. It, they're too conservative. They don't start off fast. The offense isn't talented enough, and they lean too much on the defense. And that's just kind of who they are. There's a very clear ceiling on them. Tomlin raises their floor and everything, but I think also – to an extent, there's a hard ceiling on them that they're not going to be able to get over, uh, at least not for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I agree. I mean, look, they just they, – look, they, they don't have a quarterback. And you just can't function in the NFL if you don't have a quarterback. Justin Fields is not a starting NFL quarterback. He's not. I, not think, he's, I think he's a starter. For who? Somebody who's he's, he's, for a playoff team? For a play eh, – maybe like a seven seed, which I think that's kind of what the Steelers' ceiling is right now. Okay. But, I mean, he, he hasn't played horrible this year. I'll give him that much. I mean, I like he's just he's a guy. Like I don't I don't know. I mean, it, like I watched that game and I was I, the entire time like he can't. They're not going to generate any offense. I mean, Fields is thrown for 156 yards against Atlanta, 117 against Denver, 245 to Chargers. Like, okay, fine. 312 against Colts, 131. In in three of their five games, he's thrown for a buck sixty. Guys have halves where they throw for a buck sixty. Now I'm and I understand I can get it, the whole like well you know there's no receivers but man and we can like we can, there are so many teams that like yeah, you don't have Jerry Rice, right. that's football. If you're any good, you got to make the guy around him better. That, you know it's not not every year you're gonna just have these A plus guys all over the field. Like, it just doesn't work that way. And then yeah, some guys have gotten lucky, but like like Tom Brady, a ton of his career. They didn't have all world receivers. Most of the time with him, it was just tight ends. It was a slot guy. Yes, he had Moss for a couple of years, but a lot of his career, David Givens, and Troy Brown, and like they're guys. Like they're just guys, you know. So, I mean, the Chiefs won their last two Super Bowls. Who's been the best receiver on that team in the last two years? Like on the outside, Juju, right, right. Well, I mean, my, so my pushback is that like I'm not banging the table saying that Fields is going to be a Brady or a Mahomes or anything no, like that. I, I don't think he that. is. Yeah. I think his ceiling right now is kind of just being a middle of the pack guy that needs a lot of talent around him to be able to get him to his highest peak right now. I mean, and I'm going to give him credit where it's due because like with this lack of receiver problem that he has around him, mean, he's thrown to Van Jefferson and Connor Hayward as his top oh, two saying, targets last yeah. night. Yeah. They're not good. Um, but he's been able to make plays with his feet. Uh, so far this year he's made the Denver game like yeah the box score doesn't look great he also had a 58 yard bomb to Pickens negated because of a holding call he had another sure. touchdown taken away for so I'm not sitting here slamming the table saying oh Fields is a top 10 guy I think he's like a top 20 guy and he's would you played... play Rush instead of him no I would not I think that if the Steelers could run the ball you could talk me to saying okay let's see what, what's there with Russ they can't run the ball man like that they've had like this weird inverse throughout the season where last year, like Canada was horrible, but they could run the ball last year. They were, I think they finished the league the year eighth in the league in uh EPA per rush. Like they did run the ball respectively well. This year, man, they're bottom five in EPA per rush success rate. They have a lot of yards per game, but that's because that's more like a volume stat. They haven't averaged more than four yards a carry in a game this year, I don't think. So 
Uh, I wouldn't take Fields out. I don't think he's played god awful. I think he's played like fine. Last like the game against Indy led three straight scoring drives. He looked really good in the second half after a slow start. I think that he's played respectable. Let, and again, even last night, like probably his worst game as a Steeler, but even then it was like a C game. Like I don't think he's done. I don't think he's played atrocious where you got to turn the keys over to Russ. I would keep Fields in. Okay. I mean, I'm not, I'm not like pounding the table for Russell Wilson. Right. I, just, I don't think, I don't think too many people are. Uh, no, I'm just curious. Before. Like, because I just think at some point here you're going to need to like throw a 200 yards game. Yeah. yeah. And look, that's fair. Yeah. But again, I know that you don't want to hear the argument of who is he throwing to, but it's a real one. It is a real one, unfortunately. It is, but like Frymer's a good tight end. Frymer's a good tight end. And Pickens, now I don't know what the hell's going on with Pickens. I'm telling you, man. But he's a, he's a really good receiver. Yeah. So it's like, come on. I mean, complete a pass. Like, don't throw for a buck 12. Like, it's, like, you got to at some point here be able to – and that's not just on him. Like, that's also on the coaches being able to put it in the him in a decent yeah. position. But – you know, I guess there's just a part of me, and and I get it. I'm not comparing him to Mahomes or Burrow, but like, you need to be able to go out there and do something. I mean, you have to be able. Jaden Daniels has McLaurin. He has nobody else. They suck other than that kid. Okay, <laughs> and Daniels is out there making plays. He's doing and, really well. Right. I mean, you know, Jordan Love doesn't have any god tier receivers on that team. Like Jaden Reed's He's got four fine. good ones though. Romeo Dobbs is at home playing video games. Man, does he want to show up to work? <laughs> Watson's hurt, right? She got Watson's hurt. Dobbs is suspended. Like, who did they have yesterday? Tucker Craft had two Kraft. touchdowns yesterday. Yeah. yeah. But that's my point. Like, he's he's elevating these guys. He's elevating these players, you know? And it's like, you need to do that. By the way, this isn't a field center. Like, now, this is a guy I have, I have more expectations of. So the same thing for Herbert. Look, man, sure. I don't want to hear like, oh, well, I have no players. No, no, you know, listen, they they stripped it down, right? Like, I will grant the man this year to some extent. Like, they really did just kind of hit the reset button there. Yeah. Drafted McConkey right after the first round. Quentin Johnson's a first round pick. Like, you're throwing less than any team in football. Now, that's not his decision. I get it. He's running the plays that are called. But my point mm -hmm. is, if you're that upper echelon guy, you know, fields like you're to your point, maybe you want to argue he's middle tier, fine. If you're an upper echelon quarterback, like Herbert, like Allen, look, man, I don't give a damn. Like, you are getting paid. Like in the, and now we're getting on a different topic. But, like, if you're getting paid like Herbert is, if you're getting paid like Allen is, you understand that, like, you're going to lose guys around you. Sure. So you've got to be the guy. You've got to be that guy. And if you're not that guy, it's a problem. I think that's what a lot of NFL teams deal with. Is they, you know, Now the Steelers aren't in this ball. But, like, some of these teams – I think Philly's kind of getting out of some of this with the injuries they've had this year. You pay that guy, Dallas, God knows, is getting some of this. Oh, you pay yeah. that guy, he better be the guy. Because if he's not, you got problems. Because now you can't go out and make an acquisition. You can't go out and make a move that you'd normally make when the guy was on a rookie deal or a cheaper deal. So, again, this is a totally different conversation, but it's, I think it's relevant to what is going on in the NFL. Like we've all talked about, I wrote a big feature piece on it, like the downturn of offense this year. Yeah, that's a big part of it. These quarterbacks, how many of them are legitimately really good or better? Six, maybe eight. That's probably the limit. Yeah, and I mean, we we can transition this into Buffalo game because you know we're talking about quarterbacks and everything. Um, one of the just weirdest games from an offensive standpoint that I've seen over the past few years with the bills. And that includes like the Ken Dorsey stuff that took place last year and then switching over to Joe Brady. But it felt like Ken Dorsey was calling the plays yesterday. They didn't have Khalil Shakir. Um, so they ran the offense through Mac Hollins, which felt like a weird decision. And if you look at Allen's passing chart, like half of his targets are like 25 yards downfield. Like they, they just started chucking it when they got a they got away from what was working which is okay underneath efficient stuff lean on the run game and then that will open up something downfield it felt like they were just forcing the issue and it wasn't working they didn't run the ball nearly enough with james cook i don't think um especially because early in the game he was getting good yardage each time he touched the ball so i don't really know what the uh the game plan was there with buffalo and i know you're going to talk about allen and everything uh 
first two throws of the game. He had Matt Collins pretty open. I saw a few, you know, of our mutual Bills friends say, "Oh, I mean, Matt's got to catch that." Josh let him a little bit far. We can, you know, we can call a spade a spade. Um, and then the overthrow to Kincaid. Um, but watching that game back today, I I understand that you're going to say, "Well, he's great and he's got to elevate him." Bro, there's no one open. And if he does try to do it and he forces the ball into tight windows and he throws interceptions, then the conversation is, oh, Josh Allen, turnover machine. I, I, I don't think that there's a win situation there for Josh. And again, nine of 30. Yeah, I expect better than that, too. So I'm not saying he played perfect. He did not. But again, watching that game back, man, like no one's open. The play calling was weird. They didn't really have any sort of easy button where they can just do, you know, just run mesh a few times, have a few crossers underneath to get easy completions and easy yards. They didn't really do any of that. And it ended up costing them. So did the coaching down the stretch though, because they get the ball back. Somehow they're tied at 20 with 30 seconds left. And rather than just running the ball, getting the game to overtime, they dial up three straight pass plays that are incomplete. The Texans get the ball back and win. I don't know what the hell the bills were doing yesterday. I think being serious, there's a lot of things that can be true at one time. Okay. Their receivers, and and oh, well, yesterday of course Shakir was out too. So yeah. the fact their receivers are terrible. Yeah. Okay, and and I and, and look, I'm not saying Keon Coleman's always going to be terrible. And I know he had a 49 yard touchdown catch. Keon Coleman was terrible yesterday too. Well, Josh, well, let's just, the, the, Josh threw a ball. He expected him to look on a slant and hit him right head. in the back of the head. Like Coleman, like the, the problem with Coleman is he has no speed. So it's like. <laughs> You're going to win those contested catch balls with Coleman because he's big. Yeah. But Coleman's not going to run away from somebody 50 yards down the field. It's not going to happen. Now, to his credit, he actually, on his touchdown pass, caught a ball. Lasseter should have just tackled him. He tried to make a, a weight, uh, an overly aggressive play. And Coleman, to his credit, made a nice play and got down the sideline. But my point is, like, I'm not I'm not dishing Keon Coleman. It's just that he's young. He's a, he's a, he's a rookie. You can't sit there and go, hey, kid, it's on you. Like, yeah. that's that's unfair. The guy who's been most disappointing to me so far this year is Dalton Kincaid. Buddy, like, I, I'm i somebody, I'm all in on Dalton Kincaid. I thought he could have 1,000 yards this year. I don't know if he's going to hit 500. I mean, he's done nothing to this point in the season. Curtis Samuel is more of a rumor at this point. Like, I, like does he exist? Does anyone, Has anyone seen Curtis Samuel? I think the weirdest thing with that is watching the Bills this year, they don't give him any. It's either a screen pass to Curtis yeah, Samuel, or, every time they throw yeah, him. or he's or they're lining him up in the backfield to give him like a carry a game to see if he can yes. do anything. So Very I hear, smart. yeah, I, I don't know what they're doing with him. So so that's one thing, okay. And then like the MVS stuff, like I could have told I could have told every Bills fan in America, like this is what you're getting, have fun. Yeah, um, yeah. he'll make one unbelievable catch in the playoffs, and that, that's what he's good for. Um, <laughs> he blocked me on Twitter, and probably rightfully so. Um, so <laughs> then another thing can be true. The coaching staff in Buffalo, and I like Joe Brady, generally speaking, mm-hmm. they have a long standing history at this point. They get into games against good teams, and it is a shit show. They just they, they lose all game management principles. The ending of that football game, but by the way, by the way, because nobody's talking about the other side of this, by both of these teams, oh, it was yeah. one of the biggest tire fires I've ever seen in my life. So I don't I don't remember the exact yard line the Texans were at. I want to say it was like the 36, 37, somewhere in there. Under a 44 seconds, I think there was left. Oh, the, Bills, the grounding call. The Bills are out of timeouts. Like, buddy, run the ball. If he gets nothing, who gives a damn? Get Fair Baron on whatever hash mark he wants to be on. And you're, you're good. You, you spike the ball. You call your last timeout. Or you call eight timeouts. Sorry, eight, three timeouts. You would just call timeout. Call timeout. One second left. And you can No. The Texans come out and have some wonky play call that you can tell the second he snapped the ball, this is a disaster. Yeah. And Stroud just grounds it. So now they're out of field goal range. The Bills get this gift. Now, if McDermott was thinking clearly, I think it would have been like, hey, man, we're at the three. Yeah. Like, we have no timeouts. This probably isn't going to work very well for us. Like, just run the ball three times. If we get a first down, great. If we don't, well, at least Houston's burned all their timeouts. We maybe get seven, eight yards of field position. We punt the ball away, blah, 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 blah. Well, they throw three, four verts calls in there. And (laughs) shockingly, don't catch any of them. And 
they hit the punt, and then Fairbairn could give him credit. He hits a 59 yard field goal, and they win. Boots the hell out of it. Yeah, good. Right. Play. I mean, great kick. But so those two things are true ones, right? right? So so far, so the, the receivers are not good, and the coaching staff, well, I think is not terrible, but like in big moments, it's generally crapped its pants. They just crap their pants, man, it's, like it's, consistently. It's but now here comes the third thing. It's also true. Okay. Josh Allen is not Justin Fields, and Josh Allen is often compared to Patrick Mahomes, and many, 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 many people over the last handful of years have been, he's best player in football. He's best quarterback in football. Then my brother in Christ, you can't go 9-30. to 30. I don't give a damn who your receivers are. I don't care. Because I got to tell you, the one thing that is true about that game is it wasn't like they were dropping the ball all over the place. Now, you could sit here and say, hey, they didn't get separation. They, they're not good. Fine, fine. The Chiefs won the Super Bowl last year playing me at receiver. And you know what? They dropped more passes than anybody in football. And all I heard last year, the whole year was, well, Mahomes, I mean, he's got 14 interceptions. And what's going on? And, and anybody who watched them, again, with the multiple things from these real ones, were like, he has no receivers. This is abominable how bad this is. But also, it's like, hey, man, you got to figure it out because you're Patrick F. and Mahomes. That's it. Like, you're just going to figure it out. And they did. They did. They did in the playoffs. Now, to be fair, to be fair, full context, Mahomes had a great defense last year. That yeah. defense allowed for him to basically have to score 20 points. And they went, but when they went to Buffalo in the playoffs, they had to score over and over and over. And they just kept doing it. And Hardman did his damnedest to lose the game for him. <laughs> and they still won. Like, I'm not saying Allen's got to go out and be 23 or 30 for 300. That is unrealistic with this group. I am not saying that. What I am saying is, Dude, you got to be 16 or 17 or 30. I'm sorry. You just cannot go out there and be nine of 30. And also, too, he should have thrown two picks. Okay. He hit guys in the chest. It was a the, the linebacker twice. And, you know, look, is it all on him? No. But when you're the man, you're the man. And for the first three weeks of this year, all I heard was, man, don't need Stephon Diggs. Don't need him. What a loser. Don't need that guy. Yeah, how's that going <laughs> right about now? You know, whenever I hear people say anything in sports is by committee, you know why it's by committee? Because they have nobody who's good. That's why. Anytime a baseball team says, yeah, good close by committee, it's because everybody stinks. That's why. <laughs> because if you had Mariano Rivera, you're not closing by committee. He's closing. And I know this because as a, as a longtime fan of the Chiefs, I remember last year when they were like, yeah, receiver by committee. You're like, oh, God. Kadarius no, Tony anyway. and Sky Moore. And... You knew the second they said, you're like, this is terrible. Like, <laughs> it's Kadarius Tony and it's MVS and it's Sky Moore and it's Justin Watt. Because you know what's going to happen on Monday night for the Chiefs Saints? It's about to be receiver by committee outside of Xavier Worthy. Yeah. And not good. Not good. <laughs> Kareem Hunt better have his PF Flyers on. Good need him. Because <laughs> they, you just know, like, Allen is going to have to deal with this to some degree. Now, maybe they go out and they acquire a receiver, and they should. They but their cap situation going forward is tough to deal with. I don't like the Adams. I've seen so many people say they just need Devontae Adams. I, how the hell are they going to pay him? They're paying Von Miller a fortune. So, like, how do you do it? That's where – now, Cooper's more interesting to me for them. Cheaper Hopkins deals that they can more do. Interesting because, again, those are one-year deals, and you yeah. can mitigate the cap a little bit. But when you're talking about Adams, you're talking about years of paying him. I don't – I'll be honest with you, man. I don't think that's the right move for them. I really don't. I think I, I don't think either. Other guys make more sense. I, I agree, and and the thing with with Josh too yesterday, like we can just acknowledge, like, hey, he had a a bad game. Like every quarterback is going to have a bad game, and, that, bad game. and that's fine. And when it comes to that, and like I said, I mean, I was very much one of those people through the first three weeks who was banging that horn, saying Look, he's having the best year of his career statistically right now through three games, and he's doing it without Diggs. Maybe this is the right move on. And I still, and by the way, I still think that. Addition by subtraction is a fine way of looking at it. If there was that much going wrong in the locker room, fine. Sure. But, but the fact that when, and I like Khalil Shakir, I think he's awesome, but he's not that echelon of receiver where if you take him out of the lineup, right. everything goes to shit, right. which yeah. it did. So um, I'm not, I'm not worried about Josh Allen necessarily. Like he's not going to go nine of 30 every week. He's a great player who had a bad game. His receivers, they need to, Brandon B needs to be shopping as we speak. Maybe they'll call George Pickens. Why not? Maybe maybe that'll be the move. And that's what they need. Got rid of Stephon yeah. Diggs and then brought in George Pickens. <laughs> That'd be great. Um, no, That'd be exactly what they need. Truth, though, what you're saying, like getting rid of Diggs, I think had to do a lot with the internal 
yeah. engine to that team. And like, fine, fine. I, I get that's a real thing. I have no beef with that. But there was just talk after three weeks when they b- were busy beating up on Mo Larry and Curly in the NFL. Like, hey, they don't need him. Don't need this guy. Don't need a thousand yard receiver. Oh, they're better. No, I like, guess what? As it turns out, you kind of need somebody who can catch a pass. Like, and not having, I mean, hell, man. Like, I'm not a Gabe Davis guy. Okay. I'm not. Yeah. Gabe Davis by a mile is better than anybody on this team yeah. outside of Shakira. But like, not even close. He's Jerry Rice compared to these guys. <laughs> I mean, right now, by the way, if, if anyone's out there uh, wondering, so Gabe Davis over on Jacksonville has uh, 12 catches for a buck 59, which is nothing special. Nope. That would be God tier for the Bills right now. Okay. Who, like, who is their leading receiver outside of Shakir right now? Oh my um, God. I, I, honestly, I don't know off the top of my head. Gen- Generally, don't know. I assume it's probably Kincaid, but in terms of like wide receiver, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, in I'll terms of like wide receiver position, my guess is it's probably Coleman. It's Coleman. Okay. So Shakir has 230 yards. Coleman has 175. Now, granted, a nine catches. So like I get, yeah, how hey, you look at it, that's good. The, and then it's Kincaid with a buck 66, Cook with a buck 23, and then it's Mac Collins with 73. Curtis Samuel has 48 yards receiving. Also, did Dawson Knox, did, did he, like, is he just gone? No, is I think gone? Dawson Knox is very much just used for, like, short yardage stuff, blocking, occasional red zone stuff. He's not any sort of receiving threat anymore. That's why they drafted Kincaid. But see, I don't understand this. This is this is a Bills, and this is on the coaching staff. Rookie, do, do you like do you take a guess at how old Dawson Knox is? He's been there at 29? 27. Okay. okay. He's 27 years old. The guy... In the two years before they drafted Kincaid, 49 catches, 48 catches, 587 yards, 517 yards, and combined for 15 touchdowns. You and then those are like, he's garbage, can't use him. Our um, our, our mutual buddy, Matt Perino, wrote about this today saying, you know, they've had 18 months to figure out how to use 12 personnel and they haven't figured out anything. Like, what is going on? How is this guy, you're going to tell me that you'd rather have Mac Hollins out there? No. Like, what are we doing? Like, why is Mac Hollins out? And, and look, I actually have interviewed Mac Hollins. He's a super nice guy. Oh, it seems like a very great, cool dude. Great dude. Mac Hollins is the epitome of a guy. Like, just, yeah. He, I mean, here are his yardage souls. He's been in the league since 2017, okay? Here are the yardage souls. 226, 125, 176, 223, outlier of a lifetime, 690, yeah. 251, and now 73. Why is Matt Collins playing over Dawson Knox? Why is Curtis Samuel playing the way he's playing? And if he's playing like that, why is he playing over Dawson Knox? MVS should never play. Like, what? <laughs> what is the argument? I, I don't. It's just such a weird thing. Like, you should be sitting. If you're the Bills, the answer to your problems, other than trade for somebody, is hey, look. We're gonna go with Shakir. We're gonna go with Coleman. We're gonna have Cook on the field, and we're gonna go two tight ends, and we're gonna play a crap ton of twelve. Because we can get some mismatches out of it. We can run the ball out of it. And the Bills just refuse. They're like, that's all right, Curtis Samuel. And by the way, that's that's exactly what the Chiefs have done since they traded Tyreek Hill. Just go heavy as hell. They led the NFL in 13 personnel last year. Like, they're like, okay, we'll just, you know, create mismatches, run the ball, and make life easy for Mahomes to get open guys. The Chiefs have leaned into the idea we're going to play two and three tight ends all the time. And we're going to have a ton of motion. And you're not going to be able to tell pre-staff it's a run or a pass. And this year, the one difference is Worthy, who now they they will call shot plays for. And Worthy's been fantastic. Worthy's numbers should be about twice what they are. Mahomes would be the first one to tell you. He hasn't cut the ball loose as much as he needs to. But, like, yeah, their offense is we're going to go to Kelsey. And when he's healthy, we're going to go to Rice. And we're going to go to Worthy. And then we're just going to turn around, hand the ball to Pacheco and Hunt, and just slam the crap yeah. out of the football behind our offensive line. And I, I, that is the one thing against Houston. Why not just hand the ball to Cook, who was running the ball well in that game? Yeah. And then they just like oddly stopped doing it for reasons I still don't understand. Like they, I mean, overall, Cook had 20 carries, just terrible. For 82 yards, you're running for 5.4 yards a clip. You threw for 4.4 yards a clip. Like, just run it. Hand the yeah. ball. It was, it was very, it was very bizarre. I think part of it was they got down seventeen three and they kind of felt like we got to throw away that kid, which is fair. Um, which lastly on the Bills, the only other thing I have to say is defensively they are beat up. Like I get it, Johnson's out, Milano's out. Like it's it's tough. 
they have got to figure out the middle of the field. Because yeah, in the last exactly. two weeks, I went on radio and for once in my life was smart about something before the Baltimore game. I was like, I'll tell you what Baltimore is going to do to them. They are going to play this game between the numbers and they are just going to go at those linebackers and at those safeties. And there's nothing Buffalo's doing about it. And that was pretty much the game plan. I don't think they threw the ball. So the numbers weren't a few times. There, so here it comes. Tight end, backs, in-breakers. Because with the Bills, they're predictable. You know they're going to sit in nickel. Yep. And they're going to play a ton of zone, and you just know what's coming. And I thought Houston did a lot of that. Um, now the Jets, when they play the Bills on Monday night, that is going to be like the chaos bowl for all time because both those teams desperately have to win. But I'll tell you, you know, that's going to be one of those games you better commit to Cook because the one thing about the Jets, they can cover. And like even if they have Jakir, like who the hell is getting open in that game? You're going to have to run the Jets out of some of those coverages. Um, and the, and conversely, like, if you're Buffalo, you better just double Wilson the entire game and make him beat you anywhere else. But right now, like, until they get Milano back, they have a problem up the middle. They just do. I like Bernard. He's a good player. He's not Milano. But he's a good player. Yep. Those safeties right now, it's a problem. Bro. That's it's a so- huge. Cole Bishop on the Nico Collins point literally just stood there. Just he watched him go by. Call. I, I'm breaking that play down for my all 22 piece in SI, and I watched the play about 20 times. Cole Bishop just kept backpedaling and looked at straight. Never, he never turned. He just stood there. And I think he thought, like, should I drive the, the, the dig by Dell? Should I not? But he he, he didn't cover anybody. And that's what and happens he, when you start, you know, a rookie safety in that situation. That's gonna happen. That's I, I'm, I won't be surprised if there's calls made to Micah Hyde because if he's good to go, I think a reunion will be in place there. And again, that doesn't solve other issues, but you know, it's a veteran yeah, who knows the system and everything. Like they, they have really talking, back there. Everybody's talking receiver and like, look, they need a receiver. I'm not arguing. Yeah. They, they need one. If I were them, man, I'd be making calls about safeties. Like, you need to figure that out because right now, look, Demar Hamlin's an amazing story. He's, he's not, not a starter safety. in the NFL. He's not. No. He's not a starter. Taylor Rapp's fine, but like he gets hurt a lot, and he's kind and even of even then, guy. like la- yeah, last year. I mean, he was in the perfect role because he's, he's like the third, third safety, safety he's where they rotated him. And then you know, look, Cole Bishop. I'm not. Look, he's a kid. He's a second round pick. He's a, he might have a great career, but he's a kid. And if you're asking that guy to go out there and play every snap for you as a rookie, he's not Earl Thomas, man. He's not right. Eric Berry. He's not a first round top ten pick coming in there, like. You're asking a ton of these safeties. And if you're going to play zone, like, yeah, Benford and Douglas aren't bad corners, but they're also not elite. Like, you need to have some decent safety play, and they just don't have it. I mean, these teams, if you can put those safeties in a bind, it's kind of curtains. And it's – and I talked about this saying, like, okay, everybody wants to talk about a receiver. I think that a run stop or two would be great to find somebody. Maybe you can bring it on the defensive line. There's a lot of problems with them that are holding them back. And a lot of it got masked because they played three less than good teams in the first three weeks of the season that they were able to beat up on. So we'll see. They play the Jets on Monday night. That'll be chaotic. Um AFC North, though, because uh, the Bengals are now 1-4. They blew a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter. After the uh, Jamar Chase catch and run for like a 70-yard touchdown, I thought, all right, both teams are going to be 2-3 and three once this game's done. Cincinnati seems to have this pretty wrapped up, and they did not. What are your thoughts on the Bengals right now? They're 1-4, but look at their next four games. They're going to be favored in all of them. I can't like say stick a fork in them because they ha- yeah, Joe Burrow's yeah. playing really well. I, I still think that they're going to find a way to get a playoff spot some way somehow. No, I um, I tend to agree with you. I tend to agree with you. Now I will say this with the Bengals: that defense is so bad, not good. Like that could sink them. And now I am a big Lou Anarumo believer. I think he's a great coordinator. I just don't think the guys got any horses. I mean, they can't play. Pratt and Wilson look slower at this point in their careers. They were once, I thought, good to very good. Now I think they're pretty average linebackers. I mean, a couple of years ago, they were integral parts of, of They the were. Defense. And I just feel like when you watch them now, they're a step slower. Look, they're, they're linebackers. I mean, it's attrition on the body. It's tough. Yeah. Um, Hendrickson's still great. Hubbard has not looked healthy. Rankins has not done a whole hell of a lot. They've been beat up inside anyway. Yeah, they just got uh, Miles Murphy back who was dealing with an injury. Yeah, right. And then uh, and then a corner, it's been a friggin' disaster. Cam no, Taylor Britt was supposed to be their best goal. Cam Taylor Britt's been awful. 
uh, outside of one unbelievable pick he had against Kansas <laughs> City, which to his credit was a great play. Yeah. He's, he's been terrible. Um, they they have not gotten anything out of Dax Hill, who now tore his, Achille, or his ACL, rather, excuse me. His ACL is out for the year. Uh, DJ Turner was a guy that was really high on last year. He's not really become that guy. Like, and then Von Bell is 87 years old. It's, <laughs> like, it's just, they can't cover. Like if they don't get home, it's over. There's just no ability to cover. Um, look, I still believe in, I, I still, I look, I still think they're the biggest threat to Kansas city in the AFC. I really believe that part of that's matchups. Like I think Baltimore is better than Cincinnati. But the Chiefs just wear Baltimore out. Like yeah. I, to me, I just know how that game's going to go because I've seen it a thousand times. Cincinnati is very dangerous because Burrow's great, and those receivers can really get after you. But right now, that defense is so bad. Like I will say this: I don't think they're going to win the division. I don't. I don't either. Um, I still think they'll be a wild card team, and I, you know that they're they're that classic like. They're the six seed, and the whoever the third seed is is like a oh, shit Buffalo, and you're like, oh my god, like you know, we've got, like, that team's coming in here, right? Or it's Houston or somebody like that. Yeah. Man, who the hell made it's Baltimore? Like, if but if, it feels like it feels like that would be the ultimate Buffalo thing to have happen. Like you're the three seed, and you get that team coming in there, and you're like, well, here we go, we got to score forty. Like yep. it's just, yeah. But yeah, they're that classic. You know, they get to ten and seven. And they get in the playoffs and are hot as hell because they've been playing playoff. Now, the downside of that is I think the AFC is the much better conference. Oh, yeah. And if you got to go to like Buffalo, Baltimore, Kansas City, that's that's a rough stretch. Yeah. You're probably <laughs> losing one of those games, right? Like I know the Chiefs last year went on their jaunt through Baltimore and Buffalo and then beat the night, but like that's a that's something that's not normally going to happen. So yeah, and, you know, you're asking and, a lot to do that. And just because the Chiefs do it doesn't mean that everybody can do it. I mean, that's that's the anomaly. So, and I can tell you right now, if the Chiefs had to do it ten times, they'd probably do it once. Sure. I mean, even as great as they are, like that's hard. There's a reason that most teams don't have runs like that through the playoffs. I mean, they, you know, and and again, the one of the biggest reasons the Chiefs did it last year was the defense. Their defense was lights out, where Cincinnati's defense is not, and that's that's the problem with the look i think they're going to find a way into the playoffs i'm with you their schedule's not that hard and again you'll get the afc okay who do you got right like if that's that here, i was just about to say that like look you at, sit here right now and say these are teams i'd be shocked if they don't make the playoffs how many teams would you list in the afc it's i mean kansas city baltimore buffalo houston, houston. and Is that that's it? probably it that's yeah it. right that's but, it because after that, you look at the West and you're like, all right, other than the Chiefs, like the Chargers might make it, but like, I don't know. I don't give a shit that Denver's three and two. Denver's three. I couldn't care less. Indianapolis, I I picked to be a playoff team, but I, I just don't think Richardson is anywhere near ready to do that. Um, and look at the standings, man. Like the, you just mentioned the Colts, they're two and three. Titans are one and three right now. Jaguars, one and four. Uh, Browns are one and four. Raiders two and three, Chargers two and two, Broncos are bad at three and two, yeah, Patriots good. bad, Dolphins are bad, Jets are bad. Like the the whole thing is still very much wide if open for the wild card. One other than Kansas City and Houston in the conference has at least two losses. Yeah. So yeah, I mean even the like you've just been the Jets. It's like I don't like are the Bengals worse than the Jets. I don't I, think so. I, I don't think they are right. Like so that's kind of where I look at this thing and I'm like. All right, if you're the Bengals, the goal should be to get to 10 wins. And to do that, you've got to go nine and three. Now, look, that defense might might kill them. Maybe it kills them. I, I get it. But I was looking at their schedule. I'm like, well, they play at the Chargers and they play the Steelers twice. Those are probably the games for the Bengals they got to win. Yeah. Because then you get tiebreakers and you can kind of find they're probably going to be one of those teams that needs a tiebreaker. Or two. Like that's probably where this thing falls. But I think the four division winners, I know it's just weird to say going into like Monday night of week five, if they're healthy, it's going to be Kansas City, Buffalo, Baltimore, and Houston. I just don't – I don't know. I, I mean, maybe you could argue the Jets find their footing and they get Adams or something, but I, I don't know. Like, if the Jets beat the Bills next Monday night – Then then we can we have, have that real conversation. conversation. Yeah. We have the conversation. But I feel like that's a classic, like the Jets are going to go in there and just bumble fuck their way through like a 20-10 to 10 <laughs> loss. And – yeah, you know, and, and like we're gonna get that obligatory shot of Salo with his hands on his knees, just he's, devastating. Or, or the uh, or he's just arms crossed, staring blankly into the void. Yeah, I mean, just distraught as a human being. Yeah, I got <laughs> they when they showed there was a shot of him 
hands on knees at the end of that London game. And I thought to myself, like, is he just going to resign? <laughs> like, are we, are we to a point where he's just going to walk up to the podium? And be, I'm good. I, I, I'm I sorry. I can't anymore. I need to think about my own mental health. Like, Ro- I love that Roger- <laughs> Rogers has a unique ability to throw three brutal inters, like all on him. Like, oh, yeah. Guy's hands, not two of them in consecutive drives, by the way. One of just, them returned for a touchdown. Blatantly on him. And he still has like the, the ability to just side eye everyone who makes a mistake around him. <laughs> and you're like, bro, you lost a game for you guys. Yeah. Like, this is on you. You can bitch about everybody else and blame anybody else. You threw three picks, including a pick six. And you're like looking at Lazard and looking at Hall and looking at Hackett. And you know, it's like, you and the hacking thing kills me. It's like you wanted him here. He's the reason you're the reason he exists on the sideline. It's- what are the odds that before the season's done, uh, Nate Hackett's the Jets head coach? I feel like it's greater than zero. I, I, I think it's I think it's high if they actually fire Sala, but I think that we are in for 12 more games of just Sala and Rot. The best part of this is going to be is if this season gets completely off the rails. Oh yeah, the sniping that starts, like just you're gonna you're gonna get that like you're gonna get that leak to the press, you know. Like tell you what, Rogers not happy. Yep. And then and then Salah's gonna like say some like really terse thing in a press conference. Like, well, you know, if we didn't throw interceptions, we'd win the game. <laughs> and then Rogers is gonna come out and be like, you know what, I'm going to Egypt for week 13. I don't care. Like I, I'm just ready for all of what's going to happen. It's oh great. Anyway. God, that's great. I I, I kind of want like some like random leak that has nothing to do with football. Just like just the most passive aggressive stuff possible. Just something like embarrassing. Like yeah, we found out that Robert Sala wipes front to back instead of back to front. What do you got to say about that, Rob? And you're like, what the fuck? Uh, I don't know. Just just all the passive aggressiveness. I'm here for it. I'm absolutely here for it. It's, it's hilarious. It's the, the Jets. I don't have any sympathy. You signed up for this. Yeah. You knew what you were getting. It's like, look, and now obviously this is in a completely different way, but it's like Cleveland with Watson. Okay. Now, I don't, I have no sympathy for them that he sucks. No. You sold your soul for this guy. And now he blows and you can't win a game. It's the fans. He's up there like, oh. I was going to say, did you see his uh, presser afterwards where he's like, yeah, we're not going to change quarterbacks. I yeah. Well, then on Monday today, he was like, well, yeah, we have conversations with Andrew and the owner and, you know, we have football conversations. And I'm like, Kevin, blink twice, bud. Yeah. Like, just blink twice. I mean, this is. That is a head coach that has zero say over who's playing. No, he's just being told. This. But, you know, this is an example of a spot where if you're Kevin Stefanski, walk into Haslam's office and be, Jimmy. He's sitting. Yep. I don't care. And if you want to fire me, great. You go ahead and fire me. You can explain to everybody else why why he fired me. Because I'm done with this. And everyone in the league is going to know. Like everybody in the league is going to know why, right? And, and it's, it's respectable. I, I just I cannot imagine. I cannot imagine they're continuing to play this guy. I mean, how they're gonna they're gonna have a mutiny in that room. Have, I don't know you, how you did, do this. Did you watch any of that that game in full yesterday? I did. I watched like bits and bits, but no, I was mostly watching the the Bills, Texans, and the Bengals, uh, Ravens game. Uh, I watched a little bit of the All Twenty Two this morning. I think I watched through, like the first quarter and a half. Dude, I, this isn't news or anything, but it is oh, brutal. It is amazing how bad he is. It, it's so bad. And then like the whole thing where it looked like the Browns wanted to go for it, and Watson comes off the sideline. It's come out that they had 12 people on the field or whatever, but like just all of the semantics of everything, it's not good. It's, it's so bad. Like I keep, and every time I say they should bench him in an article or in a tweet, somebody's like, well, what are you going to do? Then it's a sunk cost. My like, buddy Who cares. <laughs> it's already a fucking sunk cost. Yeah. I got news for you. You lit that money on fire the day you gave it to him. So you might as well just park him on the bench and be like, Deshaun, put your feet up, have a Mai Tai, bud. You're not <laughs> going back in the game. Like, I I don't know what they think they're proving other than that they're idiots by just playing this guy. Like, I'm not a big Jameis Winston guy. There's no way Jameis Winston's worse than this. Absolutely no, not. He might turn the ball over more, but hell, at least you're going to get some yardage. At least you're going to do something. I mean, it, 
this is ridiculous how bad. Honestly, what I would do, and I and I really like I'm just gonna pull up the numbers to make sure I'm not completely speaking out of my rear end. Sure. Um at least in my own head. Let me see if I can yeah, here. I got this contract right here. Okay. I I would absolutely wait until after. Okay, so so he's got two years left on his deal. Yeah. <laughs> It's seventy two point nine million against the cap. That's rough. It's not good. They cannot cut him. It, it's impossible. If they cut him before next season, it's a dead cap hit of basically their entire entire salary. It's one hundred seventy two point seven million. Mm-hmm. However, if they wait until twenty twenty six. So what I would do is I would live with him on the road. I'd bench him this year, next year, and then after June 1st of 2026, which is, I know, a lifetime away, mm-hmm. I would release him. And you're just eating the, the cap number. You're eating 72.9. You're not saving anything. The Falcons just, ate a similar number whenever they moved on from Matt Ryan, if I'm not mistaken. It was, was, like it was close to there. But but back then, the cap was all. I, so I would do. I, mean, I don't give a shit. You know what? I'm eating it anyway. I'm done with you. Get out. Yep. Like you can, you can go be on a beach somewhere. I don't care what you do. I am done with this whole situation, but for the next year and a half, like if you're, if you're the Browns and you end up with the top five pick this year, you're going to take a quarterback. You're not taking a quarterback because you're, you're like, we got to Sean for two more years. I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> like you're not going to take Jalen Milrow or whoever the hell it ends up being or Shador Sanders. Mm-hmm. Or you're not going to take that guy because you're like, well, you're going to get Sean Watson for two more years. <laughs> I mean, I would literally tell him, I don't even care if you come to the building. I don't care. We will <laughs> we'll give you your game check. Stay home. I don't give a damn. That's what Houston did his last year there. Yeah. They literally were like, just go home. <laughs> People forget that. People think he was suspended. He wasn't suspended. They told him to go home and mm. paid him. And then the Browns, off of that, and 60-some-odd allegations Ugh. were like, hey, man, heard the Texas grand jury is not going to indict. <laughs> You want 230 mil guaranteed? Awesome. That's what I, people forget that, that. People also forget, by the way, there was a bidding war. Oh, yeah. The Falcons, the Panthers, the Saints, and the Browns. And the Browns With the Falcons. were all reported as out. Everybody reported the Browns, and then Haslam was like, fully guarantee it. And all of a sudden, I love it. He's like, actually, you know what? I love Lake Erie. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was at the combine and all that happened. I remember that. It was insane. So goodness, you know what? Like, I, yeah, I have no sympathy for them. They're one and four. They're going to trade Cooper, and I, if I were them, I trade everybody who wasn't nailed down because I would try to tank. I really would. I would try to absolutely tank like hell, get a quarterback, deal with one more year of him sitting around, and then I would just say, "Screw it, I'm cutting you. I'll eat the cap. I don't even care. Get out of the building." Um. So the Browns are the sixth team since 2000 to be held to less than 300 yards of offense and score less than 20 points in each of their first five games. The the other teams were the 2019 Dolphins, the 2010 Jimmy Clausen Panthers, the 2006 Dolphins, the 2004 Dolphins, and Dolphins, two, a, lot of, a lot of appearances, a lot of the Dolphins, and 2001 Redskins. Bad company to be in. They they suck. They bad suck. bad all around. Speaking of Washington though, Jane Daniels, we touched on him though. He's great. They're fun. They are fun. I, I'll tell you right now, by the way, they should trade for a receiver. Oh, absolutely. They should. I, I, if I were them, I'd call the Raiders up. Do you want a second round pick? Cool. Here you I go. Mean, they, were, they were in an Ayuk. Might as well try to be in a divide. Get DeAndre Hopkins in there for a day three pick. There you got Terry McLaurin and DeAndre Hopkins. I, cool. I get Adams on the phone, but hey, bud, you want to play Derek Carr or Jaden Daniels? Are you, <laughs> are you kidding me? And if he was like, oh, I want Derek Carr, I'd be cool. You're not, you're not serious. About winning football games, you can go. Never play. mind. Yeah, go have fun. I also look oh, forward to New Orleans trying to fit that into the cap. Have fun, guys. Oh yeah. Oh, Mickey Lewis will do it. He'll figure oh, it I, out. Oh, they will do it. But it'll be it'll be <laughs> unbelievable. They'll be an eight hundred million dollar dead cap hit on a void year in twenty twenty eight. Be great. It'd be fun. Your Chiefs play them tonight. How do you feel about that? Um, the Chiefs don't pull out anybody, so it'll be a game that gives me a migraine for three solid hours. Um, can I just say, and nothing against you, you're one of my very good friends, and I value you dearly sure. the most Im- annoying thing on twitter is these goddamn chiefs fans they're like oh, time to watch the chiefs oh no don't fuck yourselves all of you, you. Are- every single one of you totally understand i don't blame you for feeling that you, way you know how yeah i totally I, get I, it 
I can't really complain too much because like I've seen my team win a Super Bowl no, no, in my I lifetime and it's I, great. I totally get it. If I was in any other fan base, I'd be with you. But oh, man, God. there's a meme and like every team has it where it's like, oh, I can't wait to watch the Chiefs play. And then there's this huge stand where it's like, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself. Yeah, yeah. That is the most <laughs> perfect encapsulation of the Chiefs. Like, <laughs> because you know what's annoying about them? And it's, this, again, I get this is like the ultimate first world problem. You know they should kill the Saints in this game. Yeah. Like, there's no question. The Saints are playing you and me up front. It's Carr. <laughs> He's 3 of 17 against the Chiefs' lifetime. Spagnuolo's just, uh, Spagnuolo just kills him every time they play. Like, and yet, I know how this game's going to go. Sky Moore is going to get 50 snaps. He's going to get one target. He's going to drop it. They're, <laughs> they're, they're going to they're gonna go one of five in the red zone because that's just what they do. They'll give up some asinine deep ball. They'll play great defensively the whole game, except for the first drive where they give up a touchdown every game this year. They just will immediately give up seven points. And then they'll shut him down, and then Shahid will get loose for a bomb because they blow some coverage. But, like, defensively, they're hard to get mad at other than the first drive of the game. But offensively, look, up to – hey, listen, I crushed down at the game. This, I'm going to be fair. Mahomes has played, like, crap the first four Yeah, games. what the hell, man? Like, uh, And yeah. even – even like to like my home standards and everything, it's a different thing. But even then, like he he just doesn't look no, good I mean, all, all together. By his standards, because like yeah. by most standards, he's still been like fine. But yeah. by his standards, he's been awful, and he has talked about that. So I don't like he has not played well. He is trying to do this, like, and he even talked about this in the cancer story. I had a good people, but they, like he is so beholden now and conditioned over the last two years to just hey man. Throw the check down. Get the ball out. Throw the check down. He has fewer errors than anybody in the NFL. He won't throw the ball. And you watch all 22 of them. Worthy is doing jumping jacks 50 <laughs> yards down the field. Like Xavier Worthy, that kid is really good. Like if you watch him, that kid's awesome, man. He runs great routes. He's got good hands. He's fast as hell. Like, But they don't throw the ball to him enough because he'll be running a post route screaming Mm. for the ball, and he's 10 yards clear of the safety of Mahomes. Like, ah, dump it off to Noah Gray. And, (laughs) oh, my God. And then then they'll run the play again, and then he will throw it to Worthy and hit him for 50 yards. But, you know, he's he's openly talked about the fact. He's like, yeah, I got to work out of that. Like, I'm so used to doing that. And that coupled with he has made some mind-numbing interceptions this year. He's just thrown mind-numbing picks. The one to Taylor Britt, I give him a lot of credit. It's a great play, fine. Yeah. The other ones, you're like, what are you doing? Like, where, like the one that Rice got hurt on, Kelsey's wide open. The ball's just over him. So, yeah, I mean, he's just been really inconsistent. Um, but it's like, it's one of those deals like, oh, it's Mahomes. Like, he'll just get going. He'll figure mm-hmm. it out. Like, he'll have a stretch of five games where he throws for like 23 touchdowns. But it's, yes, I mean, he's not played well. The dirtiest secret about the Chiefs so far this year, like, everybody's talking about Kelsey. I think Kelsey's fine for watching him on film. Like, I mean, he's 35. He's not even he was 30, but he's fine. Mahomes is the reason they're not playing that well right now. Mm-hmm. Like, Mahomes is not playing well. The rest of that team is playing pretty damn well. The offensive line's great. Now that they put Juan Day Morris in there at tackle, he's been really good. And Juan Taylor takes penalties, but he's he's a good pass blocker. Um, defensively, they're ridiculous. Def- they got so many damn corners, you can't get them all on the field. Like, they're just like, oh, what about this guy? And the guy comes in and plays 50 great snaps. And they just yeah, like, no, right. like Chamari Connor showed up this year and he's played really well. They've got uh, was it Jalen Watson as well. Like, Jaylen, they, they, they just Watson, co- make corners in a lab in Kansas Jaylen City. Jalen Watson was working at a Wendy's when they drafted him. That's amazing. Out of the seventh round, they, they had a seventh round, they had two picks. They took him and Isaiah Pacheco. They, they <laughs> took Jalen Watson. And Jalen Watson's been the third corner since he was a rookie because he's played behind Snead and McDuffie. Mm-hmm. And then this year they were like, well, what are they going to do with McDuffie? Because Snead's gone. So is McDuffie just going to lock in as a slot guy? He's going to play outside. And it turns out they move him around. Watson's been like the one guy plays on the boundary every snap. Watson has been as good as McDuffie this year. Like to mm-hmm. the point where you're like, oh my God, he's basically like Jerry Snead. Like they, like they just like found an, now he doesn't have the versatility Snead does because Snead can play inside too. Yeah. But Watson plays that same type of stock. I'm going to get on the line of scrimmage and just turn this into a boxing match. And he's got good technique. They've got a million safeties. Connor can play safety. He can play slot corner. He can play outside. They'll play him in nickel. They'll, I mean, it's just – so, like, defensively, they're great. And that allows for them to just dick around offensively for 57 minutes. And then Mahomes is like, all right, guys, one big drive. We got it in us. Like, yeah, no problem. And then they go right down the field and they score. And at that point, my blood pressure is like 220 over 180 
do them so annoyed after 60 <laughs> minutes. But yeah, they they'll I, I think long way to a short answer. I think they win the game. I think it's a one score game. I think they infuriate everybody, but they'll win. And and we'll be on Twitter tomorrow going, if this call had gone this way, and you know, it's like okay. Sure. It does feel like that's been like a weekly thing uh, with the Chiefs so far this year is like a controversial call. But like, I feel like they're not controversial call. Like the likely thing, like I guess I'm like, oh, you know, his toe, his toes out of bounds, bro. Like the field is 120 yards long. Like, sorry, he went too far. He's out of bounds. Like they're not going to change like the, the rules of right. the sport. And then the, the Bengals one is the, the one that really killed me. No, I mean, that, that was past yeah, interference. I'm... Rush is right from behind. It, like, <laughs> it was one of those things, the second in real time that it happened, I didn't even like question whether or not they were going to throw the fly. I'm like, oh, my right. God, he's interference. He killed it. Like, he was there, he was there a second and a half for the ball was. Oh, and then, like, man. I heard people on like major stations being like, that ball is uncatchable. If you look at the replay, it hit the Bengals defender in his helmet. Yeah. I'm like, he's going to throw right at Rice's face mask. What are, I mean, so, like, I don't feel like those are controversial calls, but, like, people just can't handle that they win. And it's like, now, now, the one call that was the other way, it was Cook interfered with with Pitt. That was very that much was, so, yes. He tackled him. There should have been a call. There should have been a call, and there wasn't. And that was a bad missed call. I'll be the first to say that. But I also am like, do you guys watch the other games in the NFL? There's terrible calls oh, in yeah. every game. Every game, and every game, nobody cares if you're rigging the Cardinals, right? Like, it's like, but no, the Chiefs. It's all that's such a lot of shit. But I did, after after that whole Bengals thing, I did a column where I just like looked back at the, like the last five years of penalties and where the Chiefs ranked, and like three of the five years, they're like the top ten penalized teams. So like, let's let's calm down a little bit. Yes, it just, it's so goofy. It I, it's like every every week you get like people will like send me like, see, it's rigged. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> You're right. No, that guy wasn't there 18 minutes early on that PI. You're right. Like, and then you get these people who are like, well, you're allowed to play the ball. Like, yeah, not to a guy's back. Yeah. It's... Like, that's what's called pass interference. Like, it's, oh, my God. Yeah. But anyway, people will always, uh, you yeah, know, they'll, they'll always do something that'll uh, just continue to be as dumb as possible and they'll be proud of it. So good for them. All around tremendous. All right. That's all week five's biggest stories. What do you got? Uh, the Sports Illustrated now coming. What's coming? Oh God, what's coming? Uh, I've got a story coming this week about uh, the receivers that are going to be on the on the block, and I kind of link them to different teams based on like different little connections. Like for an example, like Deontay Johnson's in Carolina. Dan Morgan is the GM in Carolina. Dan Morgan came from Buffalo, and guess what? Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott came from Carolina, and there's a lot of ties that bind there. So like that's an example. I, I look at like twelve or fifteen guys. Um, got the all 22 coming out on Wednesday. Um, kind of a lighthearted piece to do the watchability index, which goes up Saturday morning where I just basically ranked the 10 best games. And I, I usually make fun of like the worst three on the list. Um, so yeah, a bunch of stuff. You can check it out on, on Twitter. God knows it'll all be there. I'm sure that the, uh, Steelers and Raiders will be at the top of that watchability list. It's going to be, going to be a great, great game all around in Vegas. The game's a tragedy. Uh, it's not going to be fun. I'm going to watch every snap of it as I do every week. It's going to be horrible. It's Speaking of Vegas. Yeah, yeah, no. Speaking of Vegas, um, interview with Max Crosby is out. You can go read that on SB Nation. That was a lot of fun. Let's go read that. Um, if you're listening to this as a podcast, leave a review. I read all of them. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Do all that fun stuff. And we'll be back later on in the week to preview week six. So appreciate everybody for listening. Talk to you soon. And thank you for listening to The Pump Fake.